And it's always exciting to, f to find a lamp that is fulfilling the needs that I was looking for those years ago. Well, dado rights have been the forerunners in development in terms of the quality of light that's produced and the, ma the quality of manufacturing in that they're beautifully made. I think we bought our first set of dado lights as a unit probably late 80s, early 90s, I can't remember the exact date, I and mean, it was a, a set of four um, 100s, classic 100s, and it was just like, God bless, we've got a light we can focus, we can, you know, we can lock it in position, and you gradually get used to them, and those two, the, the 100 and the 150, really have been a workhorse now for us on model shoots, you know, for over 20 years. Initially, the innovation of Dado Light was um, fearless, really. I, I just thought, what a, what a wonderful... It was designed from the ground up. It wasn't, it wasn't just another version of a Fresnel lamp. It was actually designed as, OK, let's, what's, what's wrong at the moment with lamps? You know? And it was all so old, these things came along and they just they st started fresh, new, from the ground up, as I say. It's a great lamp. Uh, this new range continues. It's not just a case of a big paint roller, it's a beautiful fine uh, bristle brush that you've actually painted gently exactly where you want the paint light to go and these tools allow you to do that. So when the dado came along, it, changed, it was kind of like a game changer then, um, you know, for certain situations where you needed small precise lighting. But nowadays, it's even more of a game changer because nowadays, whereas before I'd have a set of dados for pack shots, you know, you, you have a pack shot immediately, every gaffer in the country knows this, and pack shot dado. But now I'm looking at dados for serving way, a far wider multitude of, uh, of purposes. So from the very start, it was all about one little lamp that you had with you, and then you build up the second one, the third one comes along. and fitting so many straightforward situations of interviews, pack shots, that sort of thing, where a nice little point source, a really clean light, is absolutely perfect and just brings the whole thing alive. They are very so practical. That's it. So it, it corresponds to the way we live. We need to go fast. That Those tools is perfect. What's so wonderful about them is if you want something sharp, you know, there's this little one, but as I said, the 650 and the 400, which is an HMI light, they're beautiful lights and they're small and they're compact mm. and they do the jobs that, you know, that, that much bigger lights did. It's just, you put the light where you want it and it's fantastic. I mean, even on these, there's a grid that comes on, it's a magnetic grid that just sort of goes onto the, the front of it. And of course, the other thing with these is uh, you're not frying your talent, you know, that is, it's not even warm. You know, it's it's whoa, you know it's very bright, but it's not warm at all. Take it away, switch it off, straighten the box, away you go. Really, the lights that get the most work are my dados, my little 150 watt, uh, uh, you know, light heads about this big, and they're incredibly versatile. When we were doing a job recently, we actually had the dados um, sort of uh, constantly wired up just on long um, XLRs, um, just so that we could just quickly walk them in. They are honestly the cleanest light out there and as a photographer it was really important for me. Um, I'm not necessarily from a film background but I knew about lighting and knew about the quality of light was really important. I was surprised to see how powerful it was. The reason I was interested in it was because of its spot flood range which is I believe 20 to 1. So you do get more range than any other light that I know of. What got me initially was just the fact that you could dim them. Just the fact that there was a built-in dimmer and that made such a difference. And then I understood what the focusing ability was about. The focusing principle of the original light is still very, very special about the data light. I mean, there's no other light that quite has integrated that focusing that the projection system that the data light has and none as good. I mean, if you are looking for a small unit that can focus like that, there is no better light.
up on the rail there you see some of the most fantastic little tools on this planet. Very insignificant looking little lamp, but once you get to know it, um, they just are one of the finest lighting tools uh, in the industry of its size and shape. The dado light, the standard DLH4, um, comes in various sizes, shapes, or when I say sizes and shapes, some of them have got um, uh, transformer on the bottom, some of them will uh, dim through DMX or through dimmers, dimmer, dimmer boards. There's the little uh, little 200 uh, watt daylight version there. Um, all the adapters and um, uh, projectors and things that come with it, wide angle adapters, and as you can see on the bench there, there's a million one little adaptions of the dado light. Which, which make this um, tool incredibly versatile, but um, um, makes it also uh, a very surgical tool in terms of, uh, of what you can do with it. From gobos to uh, the DPI, which is uh, for putting a slit of light across the eyes and diffusing it so you get uh, light in the eyes. Um, just a, a, a neat, slit of light across the eyes without uh, you actually noticing it but it's still there and effective. Um, all sorts of lenses for projecting uh, images uh, as you can see on the back wall there you've got uh, gobos there's actually three different uh, projections there one is the, uh, the Kina Flow logo, one is the actual lamp and the third one is the uh, the splash of light coming out the uh, the, the front of the uh, the lamp, which is um, uh, another lamp over here, which <laughs> which is just part of the uh, the illusion um, that you create. The DP2 uh, with the uh, actual shutter blades in it, which give you that uh, that particular shape on the wall there. Versatile lamps, 24 volt. 150 watt. I just find it's the, the only downside of this lamp is that it's um, that it's addictive. Everywhere you go, there is some reason for using one of these lamps. And um, I don't know what the world would do if we didn't have Dado Weigert in it, uh, who uh, invented this tool because it's just an exceptional surgical lighting tool that just doesn't uh, exist in anywhere else on the planet. And it's. Um, it's just an amazing tool and um, I'd just like to say thank you Dado, you've brought some light into our lives. A 40 watt lamp which is balanced to, um, to daylight and it's got a wonderful range of swap and flood and it can dim and it, it's just extraordinary that and, and it can come off the mains or battery, 12 watt or two volt. So, I mean, that's to think what you can get out of that, and it's daylight colour. Yes. It's yeah. inc incredible. Gosh, it's good, isn't it? It's fantastic. <laughs> 40 watts. Know, but it's a lovely know, light, isn't it? Look how even that is. And it's got a big range. Good Lord. Yeah. It's got a nice cut, hasn't it? It's beautiful. Yeah. It's absolutely beautiful. Naturally, that is just a very good small Fresnel lamp that works off a battery, a battery that lasts for ages. <laughs> just using battery power like gives you so much, just broadens your horizon so much. You limit your time of setup and breaking down. Um, you can basically set up almost anywhere without having uh, the need of, of, of having like cables, power cables, and, and, and electricity in general. You just turn up somewhere, boom, two lights are up there. They're good, good and fast. Having a battery powered, no brainer, it is. And they last a long time, it's not like they run out. They look so small, you think, are oh, they gonna do the job? But again, they're so well designed, they do. It's massively changed from brutes, carbon arc lights, now to LEDs that run off of a, you know, a battery on the back with the equivalent output some of these things have got, a 2.5 kilowatt daylight. Light. So yeah, it's massively changed. Dado's new range, which is just coming on the market now, 
can all be driven with batteries and you know essentially you can walk into an environment possibly not plug anything in what i love is i love the quality of his like the sharpness they're so you know crisp, yeah. Yeah, they're crisp and and you know it's going to be even left to right mm. top to bottom it's lovely yeah obviously you've got the optics of the dado which uh, are groundbreaking as we discussed earlier you know kind of game changing in a sense um, and you've got the continuity of some of the accessories. I mean, I already have some Tungsten uh, LED, uh, dados. Uh, so the fact that I can use the barn doors, the um, lens on all of the lights, it makes sense to, uh, to invest in some LEDs and have that as part of the kit. And now I've got three Filonis as well, which are the LED lights, the one by one LED lights. And they're absolutely fantastic. And what really inspires me about those is I can run them off mains or I can run them off battery. And by just sticking a V-Lock battery on, you can get several hours of use. And to me, it's revolutionized what I can do on location. Lighting, it can be about making it noticeable or it can be about keeping it subtle. And some of what we've done today, and particularly now, just in this interview, I've got two Filonis on you, filling you nicely. And if I just switch it off, you can see what a difference that actually makes. In fact, I'll switch them both off. Yeah. Now that is with no light, and just turn on the felonies, and it just fills nicely, and it's a very subtle effect. People may not have even thought this was lit. So do you find that with your work, that quite often it's about subtlety as opposed to in your face? Yeah, sure, you get very much uh, two, two looks. You get stylized and you get natural looks. Stylized is very much in a studio. It's all about, you can see it's lit properly, it's lit beautifully. Then you've got the natural look where you almost don't want the lighting to be seen. You just want to make sure the picture is exposed right, the viewer can see the subject correctly, and it doesn't look so obtrusive the lighting is used, like in this situation here. Even the little Leadzilla, the one LED light is absolutely incredible. I'll use it for product shots and get that dynamic lighting. The new 20 watt, kind of what we've got here, is incredible to be honest with you. It's something you can put in a bag, you don't need a big heavy bag to it. I actually shoot stills as well as video with these and my favourite has got to be the 40 watt. So that's something that I will take away. I've got 40 watts of power, I can scope it, mould that light, which is incredible. It's the control, the versatility and and the fact that they're so well made. Using data light has always been awesome because I could just pack many lights in, in, in a small case, be portable, light, fast, and you know, very importantly as well, it's, they're very, very rugged. So, you know, I can travel and I, I'm sure where I'll go, they'll still be working. I think every light, different light has got its place and uh, the Fellini light panel, firstly, is compared to a the American light panel is far cheaper, more reliable. The dimmers on those uh, the light panels tended to flicker a lot. So uh, everything so far about the Dado one is unbeatable price. They're great, yeah. I now own three Felonis uh, in different flavors. Um, I got two of the uh, 50 degrees. One is a uh, high output and one's a low output and I got a low output 30 degree daylight. Uh, these, these lights saved me because uh, I do night shoots battery operated. Uh, you cannot do that with most lights these days and they use batteries that I use for my Sony camera and my RED camera. I didn't rush into buying uh, LED technology. Um, I tested a few first, in fact I bought a couple and sent them back. Uh, some of the lights are tested, they had um, pretty nasty colour shift on dimming. Um, I mean this is, this is just amazing, it's the, it just holds the colour all the way through. Uh, it's very impressive. I think Dado just hit the nail on the head when they started to um, distribute these lamps. Um, they're very lightweight, I'm now lighting in, in areas that I wouldn't normally light because I wouldn't have time being battery operated. I've done a shoot the other day for example. Uh, it was in a barn, had two of these going, and so I was filming for about seven and a half hours. They were on for about seven and a half hours, and they used about a battery and a quarter. That's amazing, amazing power consumption. It's definitely changed the way I'm lighting because now it's, it's a lot quicker. I could set something up, you know, in a couple of minutes, straight out the bag, on a light stand, and there's no cables, you know, to worry about people, trip houses, all this sort of stuff. My new crush now with Little Light is the, um, 
one by one by color Filoni with the uh, with the softbox on it. They're stronger than the other brands. The quality is is better, and they're by color. Uh, they last longer on batteries. I mean, what's not to love about them? I have a fill light here, and it's a uh, uh, Filoni, right? It's the proper name. It's the competing product. Just like even looking at it, like wouldn't have such smooth color. Like the a lot of the competition, especially lately, we're seeing more ripoff products coming in the LED market, and the green or magenta shift sometimes is shocking. I mean, I was actually just forced to use one yesterday on a on a pilot. I had no real influence on the equipment and. And the, I mean, the color temperatures was a bi-color LED light. It was off in every regard. It was not 3200 where it said 3200. It was green at the same time. It was, I was, it was shocking, you know. And, and honestly, I can say, looking at this light, you can see that that won't be your problem. Great thing about these panels, which I didn't realize previously when using them, was the fact is that you can use them like traditional studio lights. You can use grids, you can use soft boxes, you can use a variety of tools to enhance the light and make it look just how you want, similar to how I've experienced with studio lighting, and they're dimmable. Okay, the other great thing about these is that they're free to just take off the stand. If you've got someone nearby, an assistant to help, they can just grab these up, point them however you want them lit and yet they can move with you, with the camera, and with the subject that you're filming. It's just great, portable, and easy to get exactly where you need. I had to do an interview recently um, with Hans Blix, the guy, the guy who was the weapons inspector in Iraq. I had to go to Stockholm with, with almost no, no equipment, and I knew he'd got glasses. So I, I knew glasses are a big problem for when you're lighting, not to get reflections. But I ended up bouncing the Tech Pro Filoni off of one of his walls and it just looked great. It had no problems with the glasses or anything. It looked absolutely fantastic. So it depends how you use how you use a light. You know, but they, they, I think direct some of these LED lights are a bit they're a bit spike they're a bit kind of they're a bit spiky and not, not so nice direct, you know. But I like them bounced and, and I like them through as you're using this one through a through a softbox. They're pretty good. I really like the look of getting the, the rim light around the back of the person. So I specifically for this shoot wanted a hard light to fire behind the subject to just give a bit of a, a nice backlight. So the panels for me didn't have enough power to do this so I really wanted a hard light which is why I chose the DLED4. You've got a dimmable light source, you've got battery power so there's very little cables running around and again the fact that it's dimmable is just superb so you can flood the light you can have a nice wide spread if you need to and of course you can use the barn doors in a typical way you would with any dado lighting so what we've essentially got is an LED version of the DLH4s exactly the same flexibility except you're mobile you've got a battery pack you don't need to be powered you can use it anywhere even now we're in a remote location, there's no power here, yet we've got three, four, five working lights if we need to, all off battery. We can just take them out the van, set them up here, and we're ready to go. Fanoni is one of those panel lamps that, um, it, it's, it doesn't look like it's gonna be absolutely amazing, but for the first time, here was a device, a unit that would pop up, had all the effects of a, a proper LED lighting system. It was lightweight, it was quick to set up, ran cool, lasted a long time on a V-Lock battery, but you could plug it in if you wanted to. And had this wonderful thing, which is the variable color temperature. And suddenly what we're doing is, you know those nightmare lighting situations, I do them a lot of these uh, conferences and exhibitions where there's tungsten, daylight, fluorescent, all sorts of light, maybe even some effects light. And that can really mess around with your white balance. So we started using the Filoni with this wonderful half and half, half tungsten, half daylight, and just tune it according to what the feel was in a particular spot, in a particular room. And instead of mucking about with the CTO gels and the CTBs and seeing what's, what's going on, um, you just go, ooh, ooh uh, that, that's, that's the one. And then we went one stage further. Panel lights are great, but then again, how about diffusion? that wraparound thing. But what the Filonis have got is this sort of strange box that goes on the front and there's like two layers of it. There's not just a bit of diff over the front. There's a little hanky in the middle which pins into the corners and then you put the separate bit of diff over there. And what you get is this beautiful, solid, 
beam of light once you put the egg crate on there which just uh, hits the face and just curls around it in the most beautiful way and that on a lamp you would think gosh that's going to be a pretty expensive thing I can't afford that but actually I can afford a couple of those you know it, 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 it's not it's one of those standard little panel lights and I feel that when it comes to the future there'll be everyone will go and get their standard little aspheric focusing dado spot of some sort and they will also have a panel lamp like the Filoni it would basically just handle so much of that sort of interview style lighting situation. Well, this is the most basic, straightforward form of uh, lighting. We're going to do a quick little demonstration here with the wonderful Filonis. I'm going to bring up this light here. And again, immediately we're having a nice, soft wraparound light from its wonderful diffuser. And I can just gently tune in the color temperature to where I want it to be about a nice, rich, golden kind of glow. Now you compare that very nice sort of light source with the same unit but without the diffuser but with a honeycomb instead. I'll just fade that one down, move over to here. And now again, if we bring up the other lamp, so your very traditional kind of harder light source. They're both felonies, both panel lights, but we can still have this wonderful 1940s hard key sort of thing. So what I'm going to do now is just add the fill, just to get the right exposure about there. And again, I can fade. the fill in and just judge the exposure difference just gently there and this is one of the one wonderful things I love about these LED units because I can fade up and down without altering color temperature color temperature is available to me to like give it a nice cool sort of dramatic effect or I can give a nice warmth inside there and suddenly the golden hour is upon us I can drop that down and give a nice rich tungsten glow because I like lighting at 4500 it's this new wonderful color temperature now again, Rick to the camera, please. Into the camera, that's great. So I can now just balance this up a little bit. And hopefully what we're seeing is that a wonderful skin tone, where basically we're, it's, it's natural, it's human, it's warm. We like that. We're very used to seeing what skin should look like. Now what we could do here is actually bump it up onto the ceiling and blast the ceiling so we can fill that way. There we go. Oops, how's that? That gives us a whole new look. And again, I'm going to cross over to the side and perhaps bring this down a bit so I can play with the contrast ratio. It's not about the amount of light. It's about the way the light works. We could do this with redheads and blondes and it'd be too much. And we have to put scrims up and nets and all sorts of things. And here I can just play with little delicate things because our wonderful you know, large chip cameras can take just a soup song of light and I can play with that beautifully. Just alter the framing slightly here. Again, oops, just zoom in slightly. Tilt up a bit. All the things the camera likes to do. And then imaginary friend over here, Rick. There we go. There we go. So what we've got here actually is a, by bringing the soft key closer, we're getting more contrast in the face because of the old inverse square law of light. And essentially what we're doing is making our little pocket money panara. Yeah, big soft um, key there, wrapping around tempering that with the, the backlight. I mean, this is standard interview lighting techniques, but you can play and twiddle and it can be done anywhere, absolutely anywhere, rather than having to bring in your lamps into a studio somewhere and set things up. We can literally do it in a garage if necessary. Really for me, photography is about light. The way I photograph, it, everything is about light. So just moving to cinematography, it's all about the light. I know we get caught up in cameras and tripods and steady cameras, but if there's no lighting, I can't make production value out of a talking headshot or whatever we're doing. I can make something look much more expensive looking production wise with a few dados. Dado, I've had friends or colleagues say, aren't they expensive? But they're just so versatile and uh, you can get them into places, mount them in unusual places, you can control them, you can put things on the front to project. What I hear a lot is like, oh, I love his lights, but they're so expensive. And I think a lot of people haven't really necessarily looked at them in detail lately because I've spent a little time on the booth today, in the booth here at, at Cinegear and just looked up a few prices and I'm like, oh, they're actually at least comparable and sometimes cheaper than the, the competing product. It is staggering. The quality and the, the way that one can change color temperature is 
you know, that's, that's, that's magic. The fact that you can turn a knob and go from daylight to tungsten, you know, that's, that's just magic. So, so it's great days. It's great days in lighting. The good thing about using data lights is um, you, you focus them so well, and I could like use three data lights. In one interview, I can lose, like, use like three or four data lights just to paint in the background, just to make it, just to give it a style and a mood. So it's, it's very good, very controllable. Dado's new range of LEDs are a revolution. They're just coming out. They're going to change the way people run around and do certain jobs. And maybe people will use them in some instances to do and to light and to push the boundaries further because it's so quick to do it, they have the time. Uh, in a world where people's production time is being shrunk all, you know, all the time, and crews shrunk. So if you can do it quickly, maybe you're going to do something you wouldn't have bothered a year ago or two years ago because the technology took too long to get you there. And it was dusk, and it was just a nice, that nice time of night. And I said, ah, let's get something a bit softer, you know. So I set that up. And uh, again, that was on 60%. I recall that. I couldn't believe it because I actually turned it down, 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 down. 60%. And it was just a way of making the, um, the softer light a bigger source, really. That's how I saw it. I was thinking more about making them look sort of decent rather than just illuminating them. Um, soft light is notoriously uncontrollable uh, without lots of flags and stands and things. Um, this grid is really useful. It takes uh, the wide soft beam and turns it into quite a narrow beam. Um, if we try it, have a look down here at the seats first. We'll put the felony on and you can see how wide that, uh, that actually is on the seats. So it pretty much covers all four seats. If I put this on now, just click it on and have a look again. It's actually quite narrow. It's probably about half the width of the original felony, which makes it great for backlights or uh, even as a key. Uh, where well you don't want any light to um, spill onto a background. I'm looking forward to using the new range, but like I said, I can talk about my experience with the old range, and I'm just I'm more of a overwhelmed. I think they're really, really good. I've seen uh, demonstrations where they're dropped in, while so they're still lit, they're dropped in water and stuff like that, so I think it's great. I think they're really good. Able Cine is my dealer in, in Burbank, and they had a workshop that Dado uh, gave. And I just signed up for it because I was curious about, I had heard the Dado name, I was curious about it, I had no interest in buying it, but the demonstration was so damn impressive. You know, I mean, he, he knocked the light into a tank of water and, you know, he, he the, you, can, you could focus them. You, uh, uh, you know, you had these teeny little scrims. Everything was small and lightweight and, and very easy for one person to deal with. And it all fit in this nice rolling suitcase and came with everything. And, you know, I, I had a gobo projector in there as well. And I had never seen anything like that, that had so many solutions in one small kit that one guy could carry around pretty easily. And so I, I bit, you know, I, I bit the bullet. I, I, I made the purchase and felt nervous about it. But I've used those lights every day I've ever worked. And they've never failed me.
Also, look at this stuff now, which is, which is, you know, this stuff's quite amazing. I mean, they're small heads, but they provide a lot of light. And with the new cameras that we're using, I mean, it's a godsend. I mean, it's really what one needs. It's classic dado, isn't it, really? They're so well made, um, so well thought out. You, you, you know they're going to work, and you know you can control them the same way. They even use some or most of the same accessories. It's the next step. You need, like, as you always need in the film industry, you need reliability of your equipment, low maintenance, and battery changes, and batteries fading. Um, also, with something like the, the, the Leadzilla, which I love so much, it's got typical dado optics, fabulous wide flood, tiny, tiny spot, and a dimmer. What else do you need? <laughs> you know, high output and a dimmer and, and those things. So, yeah, you, it gives you the versatility to be able to work that fast. It's no good just having a lamp that does this and you can work fast with it. It gives you a chance to refine the light instantly. So it's, it's necessary. I bought that as soon as it came out because it was obviously yeah, right uh, when it came out, right from the word go. Look, that's so dado. That is, that's typical dado. Look at look at that unit. Look at the look at the thought behind all of this. Soften and filter and barn doors. Typical dado. Brilliant stuff. Amazing engineer. In terms of building narrative in lights, you need to start with a very control precise source. Um, because you know um, uh, you need to start with something very precise in order to mess it up basically <laughs> so you, I, I like to start with um, I mean dados are incredibly useful for this because they're optically very pure and they're very controllable so um, when you you know uh, so you start off with a pure beam of light and then you can use that beam of light to bounce uh, to bounce off objects or to uh, tr uh, transmit through objects uh, to change that light. Uh, but you need to start with something controllable because once you start putting things in the path of the light, it's going to spread, it's going to be less controllable. So by starting off with something with precision control will allow you to get to where you want to go quicker. So basically I often use LEDs to flare the lens of the camera. Uh, and I started thinking about how I could um, um, develop that technique. And I got some bits of Perspex cut to introduce to uh, in between the lens and the light. Sometimes you can use them quite close to the lens and they can produce, I can't see what's happening here, but they can produce in interesting kind of abstract lensy flary effects. Uh, so I have a box down here of different, different perspex um, sh sheets that I've got made to play around with lens flares. There's also some antique glass here as well. Again, speaking of narrative of light, um, you start off with a, the precision of a dado with its faithful light and it's controllable uh, and then you start messing it up by putting bits of glass in front of it and these bits of glass are old antique glass with lots of ripples and different colours and whatnot uh, and they can produce um, as I say kind of dramatic narrative in the light if you start off with something very controlled like a hard source like a dado um, it's an amazing the effects you can get with these with this combination um, even something as plain as a piece of antique glass. Glass is actually um, a liquid, not a solid, did you know? <laughs> I found it out recently. Um, so it's constantly moving. And over time, what will happen with a piece of glass is it will ripple. It will kind of, it will actually, the natural shape of the glass, it wants to form into a teardrop. That's how it wants to form. So this old glass is usually thicker at the bottom than it is at the top and has lots of character and ripples over many years of that shifting, it's shifting its own little um, atoms around. Um, so uh, as a result you can get, um, when you light through it, you're going to get unusual textures uh, and it gives it, again, it gives it more drama, more narrative, um, more interesting textures to work with, particularly when it comes to lighting small objects. You can really have some fun with these and create some very interesting effects. And there's perspex here with ripples in it. Uh, these can be used in front of the camera lens, but they can also be used in front of the light as well to create uh, a slight shift in the, in the, the beam of the light uh, and creating interesting effect effects. 
you know, when you start getting into bouncing lights as well, I've got bits of mirror here, and it's really nice, you know, the advantage of having a hard controllable light like a dado is that you get to bounce it into different textures, and that produces a really interesting results. For example, when you go into a mirror, you polarise the light and you get very hard shadows, actually harder than you'd get if the light was direct. So um, you get these sort of polarised uh, lighting effects that can be very, very useful um, to add narrative of light and drama of light to, you know, objects and uh, film sets in general. Uh, so, you know, I really like bouncing dados into objects. Now, before you couldn't really get away with that because it wouldn't produce enough light, but now with, um, with really sensitive, uh, you know, digital chips, uh, when you're working with such low levels of light, suddenly these dados uh, bounced into objects uh, have a real use. You know, and you can go from something as hard as a mirror all the way down to, you know, uh, soft. Um, we've got some some soft silver here that produces. So you know, when you you can you can bounce into soft silver and get really beautiful reflections. If you look at the palm of my hand, you can see that when you bounce into the silver, you get this sheen on the skin that you wouldn't normally get. Now, if I bounce into white that sheen will go, you wouldn't get that silver. Because basically, in effect, what's happening is the oil of the skin is reflecting the source, which is now silver rather than the light. So by bouncing into silver, you can get very naturalistic, um, uh, interesting kind of results. I would never give up my dados because I can have four small little lights and carry them around with me, and that gives me so many options for accents, you know, in a scene, to create a sense of highlight, shadow, highlight, shadow, and that makes things interesting. And I'm a one-man band, you know, the fact that I can do that, carrying my light kit, you know, around right behind me with one hand, is a great credit to Data Lights. I wouldn't ever go on a shoot without my Ditos. Uh, they are my favorite light, and uh, they just work wonderfully. Production value is way up there, and uh, it's, a, it's a great light. But no other light that I know of is really acceptable to project a pattern onto skin, and the Dido works wonderfully. And that's uh, my favorite thing to do with the Dido. I do use them for other things. If you've got a, a bottle or something in the background and you want to put a special on it and light just that up, you can zoom in on that with your Dito and do just what you want to do. And that's a wonderful option as well. I've been doing a few things with just this, just the tech profile only, uh, like going abroad and, and thing. I was in France a few weeks ago. I was interviewing this guy and there was this, it, it was great because the tech profile only threw an, um, I put it into an umbrella because I take a little umbrella around with me, which is actually for, almost from the 60s. It must be probably from the 70s. It's really ancient, this umbrella. And I put the tech profile only through this umbrella because I somehow, somehow sentimentally attached to it and it always looks very nice through the umbrella. So he looked nice as a key light. And then, then this backlight came in through the, through the window and because it looked absolutely great, it looked great. You know. So you can do things with one light. You know, sometimes one light is enough. You know, one light's great sometimes. You know. but a lot of people that are doing lighting are really just illuminating. They're not really doing artistic lighting. So they bring in a big unit, light the whole room and so on. And to me, that's not the art of making movies. To me, the art of making movies is to make everything just the way you want it. That takes a lot of fixtures. And uh, that I, I, I see a lot of people that are shooting that really don't have a lot of skills. And I think that's what, another reason why they don't get Ditos. They just don't know that that light, what that light can do, and they don't have the talent and skill to use it. But also, what's really good about the data, or interesting rather, is that it, it, it's used right from the sort of smallest productions, the sort of kind of where I am, uh, right up to the largest sort of productions. You know, you'll find data, data kit on set most of the time. And, you know, I think that's, that's tribute to the design and, 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 and what the light's able to do. Yeah, they're very versatile, very helpful. Uh, like I said, they're small and getting to good places and you can get them close and they, they work. So, yeah. And they're not overly fragile like other lights. You can throw them around a bit more. Not that you should, but... I'm very excited to see more product coming from Dado and uh, I, as always, just expect 
the best. It's definitely about the quality of light. Even as I'm walking around the show today, um, maybe again because I'm a photographer and I see different colours in the lights, I can see green hues. Um, we've had situations where we've bought cheaper LEDs when we first started out and I can't get that out of the colour grade. So for skin tones for me, Nabbit and camera, I think with the digital revolution, sometimes we get lazy and think, do you know what, we'll do some stuff in post. And for me, and even as a photographer and filmmaker, I want to nail it in shot, in camera, and just having clean lighting. I always call it clean, but it's so clean. Um, even high speeds, the kinos, the dados, they're there. They're kind of the, the industry leaders for a reason. And hence, I like to work with stuff that's going to last, that it's going to perform, because I can't have my kit go wrong on a shoot. Many good lights out there, but um, combining everything, the, the, the quality of the light, the, uh, uh, how user-friendly they are, and just if you, if, you, if you put all the factors together, I think data light combines them all, so that's what's, why they're my pr uh, pr uh, preference. We're in the middle of an enormous shift in lighting technology, yes. and I've seen this in my own work, yeah. that once upon a time, everything had to revolve around where the power point was in the room. Yes, you could run cables, but now we've got tremendous lights yes. that do not need to be plugged into the wall, yes. battery operated, and you're not compromising with what you're getting. So give us some feedback on where we're at with this sort of technology. Well, look, I'm standing in front of it, aren't I? I mean, the, the thing is that you can, you know, anybody could go to a, to a supermarket or a of you know one of those sort of homeware stores and buy LEDs but the quality from them is mean, it's pretty good it's okay but if I'm after I'm after the correct color and if I'm after you know the quality of light that's what I'm looking for so what is quality of light the, the color of it the color temperature is correct the the um, the and the evenness of the light that's for me is what it's all about one interesting thing is I, I've begun to do a lot of work for UK-based networks like the BBC and so on. And um, uh, uh, what I've noticed is American clients, because we're often a small crew and we have to hurry up and get out, American clients don't know how to put my lights back in their case. Uh, all the ones from the BBC and, and uh, British you know, independent filmmakers and so on, they all know what to do with dados. I, I found that very interesting. And apparently they dados are very prevalent in the UK. I wish, I, I, you know, I'd like to see them more here in the US. I think you guys just need to get the word out. My speciality, uh, I shoot a lot of stop motion and I've used a kit of eight dado lights as the key lights. Before I worked with, again with redheads and blondies and the advantage of the dado light was that the bulb would outlast a redhead bulb easily, uh, you know, I could say 20 times. You know, I'll change a redhead bulb once every eight, once every day compared to a, a, a whole job without changing a dado bulb. I have a 200 softbox light and I'm always amazed with like just the soft spread it has, how well it works for either overhead um, pancake or gem ball or something like that. They're really good for, yeah, like I said, they're small. You know, even if you've got a really nice lit set um, and you're filming a bottle or something, it's always good to have something that's very controllable, um, yeah, quite powerful that you can just slot in there and, uh, and light stuff. I grew up in the, as a camera assistant at the BBC and the standard lighting kit was a blonde and two redheads, I think it was, and you got over three kilowatts of light. You're heating up people's houses, using up their electricity. The, the efficiency of these lights, 150 watts, uh, you can do so much more with them. And even on a bigger job, with like uh, you, you've got a speaker at a conference or something, you can mount the light from quite some distance away. Yes. And light him, uh, door it down so that the light's just on him. Uh, from a distance and it's got the, po the power to do it. You get what you pay for, um, but without being extreme, these you get what you pay for. A normal small kind of lighting kit uh, would be normally about three to four um, dado lights, small dados, and two softboxes, 
so I'm sure I can deal with one or two camera interviews and you know whatever else shots I need to get just to, just to enhance the picture a bit. The dado lights have yeah, always been good. I've got three 24 volt four head kits and I've got Fellini one by one panels and yeah that's about it I think on the dado at the moment but uh, switch them on they work always good yeah even though dado lights not the only light in my kit uh, it's the essential lights that I keep in my kit it's the ones I want to bring onto set and it's the one I always pull out first on set uh, from the the 150s giving a great little eye light to kicker to those Fellinis it, it, it as a great soft source these you know work great in shooting in all aspects of filmmaking from doing documentaries to dramas to interviews to industrials but I wouldn't be on a set without my Ditos I, I can't imagine a shoot without a Dado 650. I can't imagine I can't imagine doing a shoot without um, without without Dado's equipment. I just can't imagine it. We all we all use it. I mean, if you're doing a newsreel, you're doing a big movie. We all use Dado equipment. Well, I started using them right at the beginning. This in the 80s when they first came out, and and they're godsend. You get a kit of four, and they're so versatile. But they, they soon establish themselves, certainly in commercials. Yes, I mean, the Octidome, which is the big umbrella light, I probably would have used something like um, um, two 10Ks against some three sheets of poly to get that kind of softness. Mm. Now you just switch it on. Essentially, as a, as a filmmaker or, you know, anybody, you know, making images, uh, I would say, you know, it's not about the camera, it's not about the lights, it's about uh, the story and it's about then adding those elements to the story and doing it in a way that is faithful, um, not only to the story but to the process of, of photography, you know, and that hasn't changed for over a hundred years. You know, the core principles of storytelling and cinematography are, are, in a sense are, are exactly the same.